first one. Good evening. On behalf of Benjamin and Carrie Ann Higginbotham, making space commonplace, we welcome all of you to Space Vidcast and their living room. We've gathered here tonight around the monitors as people of all lands have gathered for thousands and thousands of hours before us to share the light and to share a story. An amazing story as old as exploration itself but still being written. And though each of us has our own individual stories to tell, a true adventure emerges when we bring them all together as one. We hope you enjoy our story tonight. Reflections of Space. Welcome to Space Fidcast, episode 508 for, oh, what is today? June 2nd. June 2nd, wow. The it's already June. Is, sh- time sure does fly by. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me, as always, is beautiful, lovely, wonderful, and talented Carrie Ann Higginbotham. We'll be your hosts for this show. Uh, there was a little thing that happened in space, which was SpaceX, and that kind of dominated the news. It did? Uh, and because of that, it, all of the We're other... We're not going to talk about it at all. Um, all of the other... <laughs> Uh, kind of. We're actually not going to talk about it in the beginning part of the show really at all. Uh, it, it shadowed over all of this other really great space news. And I did want to kind of talk about some of these things. Mm-hmm. For example, a lot of people look at the dragon. They're like, oh, I can't believe we're taking huge steps backwards. What happened on the space shuttle? Well, right, right. as it happens, there actually was a captive carry t- test. Well, you may have missed this. There was a captive carry test with Dream Chaser. Yes. Dream Chaser is... I'm going to call it a next generation space shuttle, right? It's Sure, it's, it's space shuttle-ish. Well, it is a shuttle, right? There's the Dream Chaser right there. Pity. It's much smaller than the traditional space shuttle you would think of, and it's not a side-mounted design like the space shuttle you uh, uh, are familiar yesteryear. with. Exactly. Uh, this sits on top of a rocket. It would fly up to the space station, carrying humans on board, and from there, uh, you, you'd be able to... Do what it, you know, disembark, do your thing on the space station, and then it would fly back to space just like the Earth. Fly back to space. Fly (laughs) back to Earth um, like a plane. Like a plane. Like a like a brick, really, with with wings. But (laughs) you get you get the idea. the The beautiful thing about this is, it kind of gets rid of all the bad things that the shuttle had. For example, side side mounted design. Okay. Where you have the shuttle on the side of the. so, uh, external tank and you've got all that stuff that can fall down onto it right, and all right. that bad stuff. Uh, it also gets rid of the solids potentially, depends right. on what rocket you launch it on right, top of. Right, of course. Not that solids are bad per se, it was really no. the side mounted design that was bad. Uh, it also doesn't carry cargo with it. So it's right. it's designed to bring just humans and after both the Challenger and uh, Columbia disaster, mm-hmm. the, um, in the boards that did the inspections for that both said trying to do all of this in one vehicle is a terrible idea. So to keep humans and cargo separate. Separate, right? They shouldn't go up together. They're two different things with two different needs. They need two different vehicles. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to design two different rockets. Right. It just means that humans go up on one payload, cargo goes up on another payload. Okay. And so that's kind of the idea behind this. This sends up humans. So Right. So this is humans only. It, it, it would never do cargo, right? Is that I what you're saying? I believe so. Right now, this okay. is humans only. It's not designed for cargo. Okay. I, although, I, I don't know why you wouldn't... Assuming there's... You might be able to just not put humans on it and stick cargo in there. Well, I guess that, that was my differentiation. Like uh, the the Dragon module, right, uh, is... Is both in right. theory, but right now it's cargo only. Right, right. No, right. But it's designed as opposed to this. I guess that's my question. This is designed for humans. Okay, that's right. my question. So that's, that's kind of the point. So <sighs> that happened this last week. That happened on, oh, I want to say, the 31st. I believe uh, it was, yeah. Right, and that's kind of a huge milestone for being able to bring humans up. Yeah. Obviously, it was a captive carry, so it was tethered to that uh, helicopter you saw in the beginning the entire time. But still, uh, you, you know, baby steps, you gotta got to test out your vehicle and make it go. Mm-hmm. Um, also, for those of you who remember this company, Sea cool. Launch launched. Uh, the thing with Sea Launch is, uh, here's the thing with uh, launching rockets. You want to get it kind of as close to the equator as you can. Right. You, you get the best benefit from that. And most of the equator is covered in water. Mm-hmm. So Sea Launch has this giant launch barge. It's basically, an, uh, I think it's, it's a, a decommissioned oil rig. Brilliant idea. They roll it out to the equator, as close to the equator as they can get, and they launch a rocket. So here you go. This happened, uh, this happened again, this actually, on the 31st. Yeah. Yeah. 
Один. Один. Прошла команда контакт подъема. Stabilization is nominal. ILD is now transonic. Just only set the terrorists as well as you. Maybe the pressure is nominal. Five hours, 22 minutes, 59.11 seconds. Flight is nominal at Alpha 7. Five hours, 22 minutes, 59.11 seconds. Maximum dynamic pressure. Contact lift off time. I'll be stabilization uh, five hours, 22 minutes, 59 decimal 111 seconds UTC. So I uh, hope you were not playing the uh, nominal shot game with that. Right, <laughs> right. I, I don't know. I don't know why. You rocket know, companies... space is going well when everyone says things are nominal. Nominal. Rapid disassembly nominal. In the most, yeah, <laughs> thank you, in the most boring way. It oh, terrible. man. Uh, so, yeah, so that's not, uh, they're asking if that was the first launch for Sea Launch. Uh, no, it is not. Sea Launch has been a while, around for a while. They actually went into Chapter 11 protection a while ago. Right. Uh, and um, they had their kind of restructure. There is a, th this is a fun one. Search YouTube, I think it's Sea Launch Rocket Explosion, something like that. Um, it's, it is an epic rocket launch. It basically goes up and starts to spin on the pad. Uh, and you kind of see it go, boom! And then they just dissolve to a sea launch graphic. <laughs> it's like everything you don't want to do when you have a problem with your rocket. You it was turtles. hilarious. Uh, so, yeah, but uh, that was successful. Well, it was mostly successful. The launch itself was successful. Right. But unfortunately, uh, I'm hearing as of today... Uh, the solar array failed to deploy on right. the satellite itself. Now that's not a sea launch thing, right? That's the uh, that's an Intel sat thing. The guys who make the satellite. Uh, They're not too happy. Yeah. So uh, my understanding is the solar panels have failed to deploy. I think they're gonna, they're working the issue. See what they can do. Well, and it's their it's Intelsat's busy season right now. So they, they've been trying to pump these things out like every month or a couple of months kind of thing. And so to have this sort of like. Mix up, not mix up, but to have this sort of setback. I anomaly. Suppose. Anomaly. To have this anomaly uh, is is really actually it was a uh, solar panel right now. The solar panel failure is nominal. Uh, okay, yes, the failure is nominal. <laughs> Great. Uh, this wasn't. Did you put this one in the uh, Mars one? No. Or did I put that one in? I think you did. Uh, so. <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna roll this video. Uh, this yeah. was something I stumbled across, and I thought, huh. I'm just gonna roll this video for you guys. I'd like to know what you think. Um, like they don't ever tell us what they think. Yeah, I know exactly. Leave your thoughts in the comments. I'm only gonna roll a moment of it. The URL at the bottom of the uh, banner will give you the full video. So here you go, check it out. Mars One will establish human settlement on Mars in 2023. In that year, the first group of four humans will land on Mars. Every two years after that, another group will join the settlement. Okay, I'm just going to end it right there. I, I think that gives you a... The first time I heard this video, I thought she said every two weeks, <laughs> another... And I was like, oh, no. Like, who were they kidding? Every two years is a little bit more yeah. digestible. Well, and, and that makes sense. That's kind of the cycle of Mars. Right, right? You right, can't right. just launch to Mars every week. You need to wait for the planets to kind of come into alignment for that. Right. Uh, but 2023... 2023, which is, okay, it's 2012 now, so that's in 11 years. We're just going to, like, have people on Mars. No biggie. Yeah. Oh, I said 17 years accidentally. You did. Yeah, I don't no. know why I did that. It's okay. Uh, Nobody noticed. Yeah. So uh, I encourage you to watch the whole video. <laughs> Please, what was watch interesting the was, whole video. Those looked like dragons to me that were yeah. on the surface of well, Mars. But they said Mars 1 on the side, so that's how mm. you know, because dragons are clean all the way around. There's no logos on dragons at all. Uh, so uh, the chat room is coming back saying uh, we can send humans to Mars now. Um, okay, but can we? Can we? 
I mean, what, what vehicle are we sending sure, them up on? on a death wish. Uh, well, no. How, how can we? What, ve <laughs> what vehicle do they go up on? What spaceship do they use? Well... We don't have the vehicle. We don't have the spaceship. I... I, I so, no, we can't. Okay. Uh... Travel says 2023 Mars Colony, which is the key here. They're talking about setting up a colony, right. which means you need to figure out food. You need to figure out habitation. You need to figure out uh, the full recycling of water and air and everything right. in 11 years. Yeah. And, oh, the radiation problem of getting there. Oh, look, I'm not saying that this can't be done. This can be done. Um, yeah, no, there's an extensive uh, FAQ on their website. Really? Like, like extensive. Uh, so you can pages. do this. The, the, they could do this. Not only can it be done, it can be done in the timeline by 2023. Yes. The thing is, we, I think we lack the will to do it. And with that, because there's no will to do it, it's the funding. That's the important thing. Well, some, some people clearly it. have the will to do it. Mars One has the will to do it. And Elon Musk. So that's everyone. Not well, a, it's right. not enough will. Zubrin. To, it's not enough will to Zubrin generate too. the funding necessary to no, actually you're right. make it there. So, um, so Mr. Huggy is saying there's no technical or medical reason stopping us. There is a technical reason. I don't know of a spaceship capable of going to Mars today that can carry humans to Mars. Today, that, right now, that at this exact moment. That can carry humans to Mars who are still alive when they get there. No, to carry humans at all. What vehicle would you put humans on to send them to Mars? Dude, the latest uh, Mars rover is as big as is bigger than a human. But you can't put humans on the Mars rover. So how do you get humans from Earth to Mars? I meant al alive. Uh, okay, go on. No. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I encourage you to watch the entire video. And once again, I would love to see your comments. And uh, yeah, and as Black Projects in the chat room is saying, it's a lack of money, right? Yeah. No, no funding means no Mars. Uh, we could do it if we threw gobs and gobs of money at it, just like Apollo 11. And Ziggur agrees with me. MSL weighs more than one human. But there, MSL doesn't require life support. MSL doesn't require life support. You, you're so definitive in, in your terminology. And so that's that's what I'm fighting against. No, it, no, you're, you're just, no, that's just insane. You, you don't put someone inside of a fairing and say, we're sending a dead body to Mars. That's, in, it's insinuated that they would make it there alive. Okay. Well, now that we're clear. Yeah. Uh, Virgin Galactic has gotten the rocket test. Oh, I have a banner for this. Oh, yeah? Oh, wait, hang on. That's exciting. Virgin Galactic has a rocket test permit. Okay. From the FA. From the FA. FA. And the rocket test permit, basically, it's a one year permit. Mm -hmm. And what this lets them do is actually do rocket tests outside of Earth's atmosphere. So they're fi they, they, have the, they have the license now. Ah, outside of Earth's atmosphere. When I read this originally, I, I somehow magically did not put two and two together. And I was like, really? Virgin? We're talking about this? Again, they're, what, two years out from every single little milestone? Like, well, what's going on? Explain to me. Explain how, to me. How this is that much more significant than anything else. Well, it kind of is and kind of isn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because. Good thing it's in our show notes then. Uh, well, it's just a license to do the tests. Doesn't mean they're going to do them. Okay, but the article said that they were hoping to launch later on this year, yes? Yes, so the article does talk about, oh, I'll bring the banner back All up so you myself. can click on the, there you go. So, See, I do read these things. All right, boom. So the URL Thank at the you. bottom of your screen, the Reuters, that's a really hard one. Uh, anyhow, I, it's one. in our wiki. Go to our wiki and click the link. It's way easier than using these things. Um, uh, basically, just talk about how they want to do test firings later this year, um, which would be a huge step forward, right? If they can start firing the rocket engine and doing kind of full loop tests, that means we're pretty close. Okay, but so really, the 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 newsworthy part of this story is that the FAA feels comfortable enough and and secure enough in how far along scaled composites uh, who build the ship uh, has come along in order to do these tests, yes? Yes, Is that what I'm, I'm hearing? Yeah. Okay, so, that the FA isn't like, ha, 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 good try, you guys. <laughs> Come back when you build something real. Yeah, so right? the, the point is they're getting closer. Okay. It's, 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 it's becoming more real now. Okay. And they have a vehicle. Uh, they've been doing drop tests sure. with it. They have the feathering capabilities. Right. Um, you know, now we just need that rocket. It's kind okay. of an important part of the vehicle. It's like that last big thing we need. And once they have that, it'll be hopefully a cohesive system that works, hopefully, um, and uh, off we go. Remember, it is still an experimental vehicle. Yes. So it may not all go as planned. You want those problems to happen now. Yeah, before you During put testing, people. before you put people on board. Like that, that's Ashton the Kutcher. 
What? What? He bought a ticket. Oh, all right. So I, it was the one name that I could recall off the top of my head that I know he bought a ticket. Sorry. So last story before we talk about, uh, before we go to break and then we'll come back with SpaceX because, you know, that that was the big news this, this last I suppose. week and a half yeah, whatever. or whatever it was. Um, you can now fly a mini cube to space, but for not a lot of money. It's like $350. Something uh, like that, yeah. Yeah, it's not very much money at no. all. And here's what I thought would be fun. Mm -hmm. And this is just an idea. I'm going to throw it out to the Space Vidcast community and you can tell me I'm an idiot. Under 350 about 320 320 there you go. $320. Mm -hmm. I thought, what if Space Vidcast bought one? Okay. And we'll put our little logo on it. Because mm -hmm. it's a cool logo. It is a cool, right? That's a cool logo right there. Bam. Hi. Bought one, but then we worked with the community and mm -hmm. said, okay, we'll put our logo on it and that's going to be neat. But what does the community itself want to send to space? Ooh. Right? Kind of have a, you, you get a chance to put something into space. And, you know, maybe we do this as kind of a regular thing of once a month or whatever it is, we send a new little cube up into space with uh, projects from the community itself. Wouldn't that be neat? That would be neat. Right, so that's my thought. So um, it's Anyone getting married, we'll put your wedding rings up in there. Ooh, that would be cool. All right. Yeah, Anyone, I want to put my wedding rings up right? in there. Right, some, uh, some patches. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you got cute little what, trinkets you always keep with you. What do you want to fly in space? And maybe, so now what we're doing is we're taking the cost of this three. Now, the thing is, uh, I don't think the weight that you can bring up is very... Uh, very high. So right. it's not like you're going to be able to fill it full of lead and give it back to them and say, hey, fly this. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, maybe we can do some smaller items okay. and maybe we can spread that cost. We'll have to think about it a little bit more, but spread that cost. So maybe instead of having to spend $320, you can spend like a hundred bucks and everyone in the Space Vacast community kind of contributes and, you know, now you can fly something into space. Uh, Zigger is uh, suggesting lead aerogel. Lead air, whoa. My mind just blew up. I don't even know <laughs> what that is. The heaviest and the lightest <laughs> substance on the face of the planet. <laughs> I'm going to register leadaerogel.com now, I yes. think, because I don't even know what that would be. It's like, uh, is it heavy or is it light? I can't tell. It's both. <laughs> All right. Um, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, mm -hmm. I think it's time. Uh, I've actually got a cool little wrap-up video uh, talking about everything that happened in SpaceX. So we're going to come back with a wrap-up video of uh, Falcon 9 Flight 3 COTS 2 Plus mission. Yay. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Goodbye! First stage. <laughs> <laughs> Texas Global. Texas Global. That's expected. We're venting. Copy. Structures Global. Yeah, we're good. Copy. Structures Global. No. Starting gravity. Mission stop. We might want to do that alarm switch. First launch engine at full power. Looking good. Switching to on order limits. Structures Global acknowledged. Acceleration looks good. We have a solid telemetry link. Mission software 9.7.17. Good morning. Miko 1, planned shutdown on engines 1 and 9. First stage impact point past the min Miko. Miko 2. Nominal velocity at Miko. Stage set confirmed. And that ignition confirmed. Cameras forward. Dragon set. Dragon is in array deploy. Props is phenomenal. Dragon Solar Array Deployment. Newfoundland OS. Solar Array Deployment. <laughs> Solar Arrays have deployed. Well, we can see the Solar Arrays deploying. This is a great moment. Of course, this is just the first step of a very complex mission. Power Global. Uh, but from all accounts, we have Dragon orbiting the Earth with the Solar Arrays deployed. We have a, a 
couple days worth of really difficult challenges before we get to the station. But there's both, both solar arrays are deployed. Dragon is performing nominally. And we are looking forward to a great mission here to the International Space Station. And everything looks great. It continues to circle the globe. You can hear the audience here. Everyone at SpaceX, we've got 1,800 plus people. We're all working really hard. Uh, and we're on our way to a great mission. Uh, we still have we still have three and a half days, a lot of test maneuvers before we get to the station. So stay in touch with us at SpaceX.com and Twitter and continue to cheer us on. <laughs> So yeah, um, huge difference between what you see NASA side, they're even mentioning this in the chat room, what you see NASA side and what you see SpaceX side. Um, it's human, right? I mean, I think that's, that's what I like most about the, uh, the SpaceX stuff was there was cheering, there was emotion, there was love and passion behind what they were doing. And, they were uh, high fives. This is not to say that the NASA people <laughs> there were smiles. Are, this is not to say that NASA people are not passionate. I no. mean, we're, we're friends with a lot of NASA uh, engineers, and they are just as passionate, but they don't air it on NASA TV, right? So right. that passion is stripped out of NASA TV. Right. Make no mistake, NASA. I mean, there are tears. There are there is love. There is passion behind it. But uh, SpaceX airs that passion they show <laughs> yes. that how much these people care about getting into space and how much they care about accomplishing this mission and um, i think more than anything else that is what helps to make people outside of spacex people outside of the space community excited about space again because they see other people caring they see other people passionate and all of a sudden they start to care. Right. They start to become right. passionate because that excitement is infectious. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really too bad that NASA doesn't air that excitement, mm -hmm. that, they, that they do the canned interviews and the, you know, just that you, you could tell every time NASA did an interview mm -hmm. with SpaceX, you could tell it was SpaceX. Yeah. Right? Maybe it, it was driving me crazy. So I'm the video guy. So they're stripping out my color and they're putting these black borders around it. But you know what? Technical problems aside, it didn't matter. In the background, you could hear this cheering, yeah. this electricity in yeah. the air that was just awe inspiring. It was awesome. And that is what Falcon 9 Flight 3 COTS 2 Plus, I don't know what else to call that. Um, the la the, that is what the mission of the International Space Station was. And um, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. There's that, if I, I mean, obviously there was a lot more to that mission than the quick little three minute wrap up oh, video yeah. that we just showed. Um, that was very WWE of you. How so? You just like, and eh, wrap up video. <laughs> That's what happened. There were other really great announcements that came out of SpaceX kind of during this mission that I think got buried a bit because it was all overshadowed by the International Space Station mission. <laughs> thing? But the big announcement, there were two big ones. Right. Um, the, the neat one was SpaceX now has its first customer for Falcon Heavy. Yes. Falcon Heavy is, it, the vehicle you saw launched in that video was a Falcon 9. It has mm -hmm. nine Merlin engines. The Falcon mm -hmm. Heavy is uh, kind of the same concept, main middle stage, but instead of nine engines, it has 27 engines. 
It has substantially more lift capability. Um, that is the vehicle that could start bringing humans back to moon onto Mars. Um, I actually haven't run the numbers. I don't know. And where's that going to launch from? That will begin launching from Vandenberg. Um, which is here in California. Which is here in California. So if you're in the California area uh, and you want to see the most impressive rocket sound ever, uh, well, and I shouldn't say ever. Saturn V probably beat it out. That's probably one of the only rockets that would beat but it out. in our generation, uh, So for those of you and us who were not around to see. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. The most impressive in the last 30 years. There we'll you say go. That. We'll say that. Um, that's generous. Yeah, here in California, launching from Vandenberg. So SpaceX now has a customer for that. Um, uh, before I get into the other really uh, awesome thing, there are some questions in the chat room. Um, so for those who don't know, I do work as the video guy for SpaceX. I, I have to say, de facto disclaimer, as we said at the beginning of the show in the in the slate, and I'll say, oh no, we didn't, I'll put it in the post-production. Okay. Um, um, while I do work for SpaceX, SpaceX and Space Vidcast are two separate entities. Um, what I say here on Space Vidcast has no bearing on SpaceX whatsoever. SpaceX doesn't sponsor, sponsor the show. SpaceX um, has nothing to do with this show. Um, so what I say is my own opinion and not that of SpaceX and vice versa, right? So what we he say here is not the opinion, blah, 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 blah. So legal, legal mumbo jumbo aside, um, I was not in the uh, audience. I was not in the crowd. You will very rarely see me on camera because I'm running the video, right? So I'm behind the scenes making sure that all of it flows. Um, to ensure that when there are those cheering crowds of people and people are excited, um, you're able to watch that live and in real time. And you know that's my that's my job to make sure that video flows to you, to Mission Control, to everyone else. Um, it just works kind of seamlessly. So that's um, you know that's where that's where I was throughout all of that. I was actually locked away in a little video control room and kind of separated from the whole thing. It was but kind I'll of tell funny you this: he'd come home and say, "So, what did it look like?" <laughs> I'll tell you this: it was so loud. Um, oh. I was on the second floor, and that Mission Control was kind of on the first floor. It was so loud we could hear the roar of applause through the concrete walls into the actual studio on the second wow. floor. Like loud, not like a little distant rumble, like like clear as day, <laughs> everyone erupted in applause that's multiple very times. That's cool. That's, that's how loud that was. That's very if cool. If you couldn't get a gauge of how much excitement there was, right. that's what it felt like. Right. The other big announcement that came out of SpaceX, uh, and I think uh, we were just watching, uh, LA Space Salon, uh, Rick Tumlinson, yep. um, he, he put this best, um, and this is a pretty big deal. SpaceX announced a, d a partnership with Bigelow yes. to carry crew up to the Bigelow uh, Habs. Yes. So the reason this is a big deal is that where's the government? Right. There's, you know, right now. Here's a private company who's going to launch a private rocket to a private station with private with citizens. With private citizens. Hello. The, I, I don't. I can't recall a time in human history where it was <laughs> a purely privatized workflow all the way through up to a space station. Unbelievable. Including the space station, right? Private space station, private rocket, private crew. Whole thing. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying government's bad, but holy cow! Think about the ramifications of that. That is that is awesome. Yeah, that, that is truly awesome. That did give me pause when he was saying that. I kind of went absolutely. Oh yeah. And for you, Space Vcast Epic subscribers, uh, that video will be up sometime shortly. Um, so the like the first, I want to say, 30 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, was just kind of the general speech. Right. That'll be available to everyone, but only Epic gets the QA session. And that was the interesting part. That was crazy. Oh my goodness. He got some amazing conversation going. So if you're not an Epic subscriber, highly suggest doing that. Even if just for a month, just mm -hmm. to get it, because it's worth the $10, let me tell you. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, that was insane. And, you know, obviously there's a huge space community out here in LA, um, in, in a lot of California, but, you know, particularly here in LA and, and very pro new space here in the Los Angeles area. Area. And uh, so these space salons, while relatively intimate, I think there was probably no more than 40 people there, uh, very, very uh, interested and have their each have their sort of fingers in things. Mm -hmm. So there were SpaceX people were there. Uh, I think there were some Mastin people there, some x -Corp people there. Um, and then just, you know, um, lots of people, a lot of people and uh, very interested in the space community as a whole, but particularly New Space, who were just drilling Tumlinson about stuff, and it was amazing. I, I just want to take pause for a moment and consider what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. 
is sometimes it's because space moves a little bit slower and it kind of moves in sections. Right. But when you just take a step back and look at the bigger picture, mm -hmm. Virgin Galactic about to start engine test firings. Mm -hmm. SpaceX getting ready, I mean, prepping to launch Falcon Heavy type stuff, mm -hmm. right? I mean, build, they're building a pad in Vandenberg for that right now as we speak. That pad is being built. Um, one of the most powerful rockets humans have ever built. Not the most powerful, but one of them. Mm -hmm. um, SpaceX working to, uh, with Bigelow on a privatized, well, Bigelow does the privatized space station, but a truly privatized workflow all the way through from ground to space, including the space station. And by the way, that space station, I believe, is three times the volume of the International Space, usable volume is the International Space Station's usable volume or something like that. So this is not a small little dinky thing. This is going, this is quite <laughs> this literally is huge. Set. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and as DJ Flux says, there's a lot of spacey goodness happening in the next few years. And this is world changing stuff that will forever alter the course of humanity. How we look at things in the future will change based on what's happening right here, right now. Actually, Black Projects in the chat room said, uh, welcome to the future. A little bit. I, 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 I think when we look, when we move forward 10 years to 20, 22 mm -hmm. and then we look backwards from 2022 to now mm -hmm. we'll wonder how we got by without whatever it is we have mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and we talk about these really long timelines but frankly humans on mars by 2023 is possible if we choose to do it mm -hmm. uh, spacex spacex virgin galactic mass and space systems armadillo aerospace even and I know it wasn't popular, but even companies like ATK right. are changing forever yes. the course of humanity. And this is a really exciting time to be alive. I, I think this is just as exciting as when we first started putting humans on the moon with the Apollo program. Wasn't it just a couple of weeks ago when Neil deGrasse Tyson tweeted out that if things keep going the way that they are, that 2012 will only be remembered as the anniversary of things that happened 50 years prior? So... I get into, we need to take a break here, but I get into debates. I just, I you know think what? maybe let's, somebody should tweet him and be like, hey, I did. I buddy, tweeted him. You what know, up now? Let's, let's do this. Let's come back. I, I want to talk about viewer comments when we come back, yeah. but let's come back with two things. Let's come back with that, talk about that, okay. and there is a Venus transit happening, and that's yes. important too, so let's talk about that. So quick break, and when we come back, we're going to wrap up the show. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So we'll be right back, guys. Now, before we went to break, we were talking about a tweet that Neil deGrasse Tyson had, which was something along the lines of, um, if 
2012 keeps shaping up as it is, uh, uh, we're going to be looking back at this um, as a series of comp uh, past accomplishments. And, not. Right. and um, there were some interesting comments in the chat room during break. Um, one of them was uh, from Zigger saying, I'm guessing that Neil deGrasse Tyson is mostly excited by exploring, by getting out further than low Earth orbit, which is why he's so quick to dismiss all the recent accomplishments. Okay, and that, that that's that's fair, right? I mean, I, I agree, we need to get past low Earth orbit, we need to get onto Mars and beyond. Right. We don't just stop at Mars, we keep going. We right. keep going and going and going. And um, I, I think, I feel like he dismisses what's happening in the private sector and he concentrates and focuses so much on NASA mm -hmm. as the inspiring force. But I would argue this last week, SpaceX has done more to inspire than NASA has. I have had friends and family around the country, because I apologize, that's where most of my friends and family are, but at least around our country, um, text me, tweet at me, send me emails talking about, hey, SpaceX, like, they just did that really cool thing, right? Um, and it, it's it's been kind of overwhelming with people that I, I've sort of lost touch with or what have you who are just like, yeah, my, my kid was really interested in watching that. I didn't even know what was going on. Or, hey, this was really cool. I had a great conversation at work the other day because of this. And it's just been really interesting to kind of see the, I mean, exactly what you're saying, just the, the overwhelming kind of response from people who are not inside of the space community, who are, are reignited by this, who are re-interested and re- um, uh, I, I keep thinking reimagined, but that's not quite the word that I want. But you know that something gets that gets reignited in them. Um, that it's it's been very interesting to see the response. It's been really cool. And true, it's low Earth orbit, right? So it's it's not going to Mars. Yes. It's not going to the Moon. It's not going beyond. It's not pushing the boundaries yet. It's the first step, though. Remember, this is the first time a private company has done this ever. And whether you love or hate them, the private companies. Uh, SpaceX is doing this out of pure, pa you, you see the passion in those videos. And understand, I, I'm not digging on NASA. NASA is a, SpaceX could not have done this without NASA, right? It's freaking International Space Station. Right. We're standing on the shoulders of giants. But the way SpaceX tells the story mm -hmm. is far more engaging than the way NASA tells the story. Right. For no good reason, right? right? I mean, NASA could tell that story if, they, well, uh, they, they could if they wanted to, but politics gets involved. And, well, I, and that's, the, that's the downfall. I, I, I think it's not necessarily that, uh, I mean, yes, it is different because you need different messages for different people, even though if, if the actual thing is the same, right? But I, I think the really cool thing is that it's not that it's not NASA per se, but that it's NASA and this other company doing it too. That it's not just governments. That if if uh, somebody in outside of the government in our country can do it, then somebody outside of the government in another country can do it too. And I think Neil deGrasse Doctor Doctor Neil deGrasse Tyson is slightly disconnected. He grew up in the Apollo era. He remembers that, and he was inspired and awestruck by NASA by the awesomeness of what NASA did. And keep in mind, here's the thing: NASA still does awesomeness. Awesome. E even today, it's not like they stopped doing awesome things. No, no, no. And there are even more awesome projects coming out. Truly awesome things. But that's not necessarily what inspires today's generation. Right. Companies like SpaceX, where you can look at that and go, I could work there. That right. could be a real job. You, you look at NASA and you don't necessarily think you could work there. And you look at it and, and there's all this political stuff going around. It's not as inspiring. Doesn't mean they're bad. It's just not as inspiring as it once was. But now we have this right. new entity that is inspiring, that is engaging people. I mean, they're not even, I, I'm not, I don't want to say they're not even trying, but if it's happening because it is just awesome. It is kind of Not cool to that, overuse the word. But, but NASA, when NASA was first starting out, that SpaceX is kind of what NASA was. And that's right? the exciting thing, right? So here we are, this whole new thing, and this is why Dr. Tyson is wrong. This, this is the whole new beginning of a whole new chapter for humanity. And it's happening before our very eyes. And I don't know how he's missing this. He's completely and totally missing this. Wasn't it Tumlinson who just said that um, that SpaceX is redoing history, but better? Sure. Right? That works. Because somebody said somebody came back with that quote and they were like, oh, well, those of us who, you know, not don't know history that we're doomed to repeat it. We're not doomed to repeat it. We're not do, But it's know. not just SpaceX. It's Virgin Galactic. It's SpaceX. It's even it's Orbital. It's, it's Mastin Space Systems. Learn from all of those mistakes we, we and had, moving forward. We had Dave Mastin on the show talking about how he's going to get us uh, onto the moon and onto Mars using technology pretty much available today. 
right? Like, all he needs is all he needs is funding, right. and he can make that stuff go. Right. It's purely a money thing. Yeah. When before in history have you do you have these crazy rocket scientists? Because <laughs> we love Dave, but he's a crazy rocket scientist. He is a little bit. When do you have them just going? You know what? I'm gonna do this. We're gonna make this happen. This is an awesome time to be alive. This isn't a year of looking backwards. This is the year where everything changes. This is our tipping point. We're in the middle of it now. This is when humanity changes. All right, so enough of my soapbox there. Venus transit. <laughs> okay, so pretty exactly. Ben, Ben's gonna take a little breather. He's gonna center. And scene. It's gonna be good. Mm -hmm. uh, Venus transit, for those of you who don't know, uh, this is when we here on Earth can watch Venus go actually between us and the sun. You can watch it as a teeny tiny little dot. I suggest taking binoculars and looking straight at the sun. Right, right, it, as, if, if, if you can. Now, what you really wanna do, much so like a solar eclipse, uh, you want to make sure that your eyes are protected, obviously, uh, but this is a really cool thing that's going on, and unfortunately, not everyone around the world will be able to see it, so I apologize for that. I However, apologize, it's not your fault. Well, it's not my fault, I suppose, but you can watch it uh, live on the web. Uh, NASA Edge is actually out in Hawaii, so they will get the full, blown six hours worth. NASA, if you need a techie. They know. Blair, Chris, hi. Fly me out. I'm, I'm available right now. <laughs> I think I earned some vacation time. You'll be able to see it uh, via the web if, if it's completely, if you're not in an area where you'll be seeing it at all. Uh, no clouds, no clouds. No right, clouds. exactly. But there's a bunch of different observatories, of course, uh, across the country, at least in the U.S., who are also doing some special showings. And if you have a telescope with a really cool uh, sun uh, lens, the, the, what is that lens particular called? But uh, sort of like a welder's lens kind of thing, because you want to make sure that you don't burn your eyes out is essentially what it comes down to. You should be able to watch. It should take about six hours to go from one side to the other. And depending on where you are um, on the earth, uh, like in Hawaii, it almost makes a loop-de-loop. Huh. As opposed to going straight across, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a couple different websites. I'll post them in the wiki where you can check out uh, if you'll be able to see it in your area. And if not, the different websites that you can go to to see it. All right. So uh, just to be clear. And so it's that, the last time it'll happen clear, in so the we, next like hundred some odd years. So we don't get sued. Do not ever stare at the sun. Yeah. And never stare at the sun with binoculars. Ever. That's just dumb. Don't do that. So if you're going to watch the Venus transit, make sure you do it with eye protection. And a couple things to note, this is not going to be like a solar eclipse. Solar filters, thank you guys. Uh, it's not gonna be like the sun disappears. You're going to probably wanna to go to an observatory to see this, because it will be a little dot. It's in a little dot. It's, it, Venus is very, very far away from us. It's going to be a little dot going across the sun. So let's be clear on what you're going to see. Right. But it's, as you mentioned, the last time in the next like, 100 years or so, you're going to be able to see it. So um, unless you're a Kurzweilian, last time in your lifetime, you're going to see it. There you go. <laughs> well, maybe We love the Kurzweilians. All right. For those who don't know, Kurzweilians believe that um, technology will advance to a point where humans will be able to live essentially forever. Forever. Um, so let's do uh, as much time as we have left. Uh, let's do a few viewer comments from last week's show, which was about. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't last week's show. No, it was, but it was, it was last show we did the Liberty Liberty Rocket. There you go. Um, so this one is from Helios Works AV. I agree with this. No matter how rotten a mega government military contractor might be, the engineers, designers, technicians, and crew are still passionate. Talented people, and this was talking about giving ATK a chance. Yes. Um, a lot of engineers do not like ATK because of the power they wield in Congress. Right. And they've used that power to have mm -hmm. written into law um, different things that need to be put onto rockets. Right. So na it binds NASA's hands. Instead of using the technology the rocket scientists want to use, they're required to use technology that ATK had written into law. So engineers just don't like ATK because of that. Right. What I'm saying is it looks to me like a new ATK is being born. They don't seem to be doing that same thing, um, at least not on the surface. Some people are arguing, saying, well, there's this down select thing going on. Maybe they are. Um, but let's give them a chance. Um, let's, you know, this is a new era. They are paying for liberty out of pocket. They brought it this far out of their own pocket. Let's give them a chance. Um, so that's that's where that comes from. It'll be interesting to see where it goes from here. But right now, it looks very promising. Uh, speaking of that same point, I don't think they would have a chance in a fair contest. 
so in other words, um, if ATK were up against, say, SpaceX, Orbital, Blue Origins, companies like that, right. uh, as defense contractors that know how to play uh, DC pretty well, don't surprise if they win without actually succeeding. That's from Sam and Leap 02. The point basically being um, they're going to win because they'll go back to their dirty old tricks, write it into law that you have to use a certain technology. And once again, it will end up being like Constellation, I'm sorry, Constellation, uh, this uh, Senate launch system, it has about a year's worth of life left in it, maybe two years before a it gets con canceled. Launch. Space launch system, space launch system, has about two years worth of life left in it before. I don't think anyone in the industry actually expects that to get built. I, uh... Right? All right. Anyhow, uh, so that was, you know, a, a valid comment, right? We really don't yes. know. I've, you know, with the people I have talked with at ATK, um, and keep in mind, they don't sponsor the show. They don't, yeah. we, we're not getting money from them. There's no incentive for us to say nice things about ATK. I just, I have met these people. They're very passionate. They believe in what they're doing. Um, I mean, they're good people. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely do not get a snake oil salesman feel out of any not of Not at all. Not at all. I, I just want to be really clear on that. Hey, Space for Casters, does anyone know of a phone app and sh uh, that shows and tracks launch schedules? Uh, so win for Windows Phone, no. <laughs> In fact, I, I really only, there are, there's one for Android, but the, really the one I want to highlight is on um, iOS devices. So iPhone, iPad, um, iPod Touch, so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is an application called Mission Clock from mm -hmm. uh, Latency Zero. It is hands down. Hands down, the best application to track launches. Cool. It's, it's all, uh, it's what I use to track even launches that I'm involved in. Right, yeah, it just yeah. gives you all the all the data. Um, it's pretty amazing. It's a fantastic app, and it's not that expensive. Available in the App Store. Just search for Mission Clock, one word. But uh, even if you have a Windows phone, if you have a Touch, you can put it on there too. Do you have an touch. iPod Touch? Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, you can't put it on a Windows phone at all. Uh, so, uh, so here's one went through your head when Liberty launched with this recent PR effort. Oh, that's where the rapid downsize proposals are coming from. So this goes back to the idea of um, NASA is trying to kind of eliminate funding. I'm sorry. NASA is trying to, instead of having a bunch of different uh, private companies compete for uh, cargo and crew to the space station, they're trying to downsize it to just a small handful mm -hmm. or maybe even one. Right. And um, basically the entire industry is saying that is a terrible, terrible idea. Don't do that. And so there's some thought process that um, it's coming from ATK, uh, but there's no proof to that. Right, I mean, there's it's just people kind of speculating. So, um, but you know, who knows? Maybe I, I mean, I certainly don't know. Uh, Whatever thought, makes space better. I thought this was an interesting comment and something to contemplate. This is from Quantum G. He says, "What free market? NASA decides who wins. NASA is a government agency." Um, so when we think about it, a lot of these companies are getting a lot of funding from NASA, including but not limited to SpaceX. So. Would SpaceX be where they're at right now without the billion dollar contract from NASA? Yeah, but they didn't get the money until they proved that they could do it. Um, no, that's not entirely true. They, they got some money, but they didn't get... About th My understanding is like $300 million. I'd have to go look it up. But they, they Right, that's... but comparatively, that's a small amount. Yes, but where would they be without it is the point. Would they still, would they still be well, in a position... Well, do we really need Tesla? I mean, come on. Well, well, that's still a lot more than what Elon's put in. I, I know. So, uh, and, and other companies, let's see, Sierra Nevada, where would they be? Where right. would Blue Origin be? Where would, you know, anyone be? Um, so I, I think it's a valid point to kind of consider what happens. Yes, SpaceX is a private company, but they are taking government funds and have a government contract. Right. So there is still that tie. And that's why I think the Bigelow News was such a big deal. But where would they be without NASA? Right. right and are right. they how, how tied to NASA are they? If, if NASA said, okay, we're done tomorrow, ATK wins, we're done. Everyone else go away. Well, what happens to SpaceX? Right. I really, I have no idea. I have no inside information, actually, whatsoever. Oh, well. Um, this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, this was, um, <laughs> I basically said uh, that the maker community wouldn't be able, my, my point is the maker community can do things like CubeSats, but they won't be able to do payloads large enough to put humans into space. Right. And I got quite a few, I got some people who kind of agree in the next 20 years. They, they may be able to do it someday. I'm just saying in the next decade or two. Right. Uh, that's not something maker community, community is going to be do, able to do. They're not going to be able to do something that will push the forefront of space forward. 
Nano sets are awesome. I'm right. not saying nano sets are bad. Right. Or but they're not pushing the boundary of space. Right. Um, and uh, so uh, uh, Taiwan John 88 says the maker community will give you a pleasant surprise sooner than you think. I'm writing this with more computing power than all NASA had for the Apollo program. Composite materials hadn't been invented, and now they're commonplace. Rocket motors used to be rocket science, but now you can buy various models off the shelf from at least a half a dozen different vendors. It's only a matter of time, and then it's not going to be two decades. And I still disagree. Uh, if you look at what happened with SpaceX, uh, they weren't able to really even move forward to Falcon 1 until a multimillionaire came in and dropped a hundred million dollars on the company and they right. were able to start making rocket engines powerful enough to do this stuff. Right, right, right. Um, it was not a maker thing at that point. It certainly started as a garage project, but in order to get to where they're at, they had to leave the garage. They right. had to stop being a maker thing and right. became the SpaceX we know today. And um, that was no small feat. It right. took a decade to get to that point, uh, to this point, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I don't think the maker community is going to do nothing. They're just not going to be able to do something to that level. In the next 20 years. In the next uh, 20. And actually, this this brings up the next. Um, so Tom Mueller of SpaceX, who is uh, one of the chief designers of the rocket engine, mm -hmm. uh, was building liquid-fueled rocket engines in his garage before he met that crazy South African millionaire, which I think is the key point here. He met a crazy South African millionaire who wanted to put flowers on Mars. Rocket science can come out of the maker community. Uh, so forth and so on. So, uh, yes, it can come out of it, but it won't be part of it. Well, as somebody uh, was quoting John Carmack in the chat room saying that, uh, you know, rockets are simple, but they're not easy. That's true. Not everything that's simple is easy. A turbo pump, it's a very simple concept. Good luck building one big enough to make an engine with enough thrust to put a human into space. I, that's not an easy thing to do. It's simple, but it is not easy. And that will not happen in your garage. And if it is happening in your garage, make sure I live nowhere near you because when things go wrong, they go very, very wrong. Is that wrong. why we live in an apartment? That's why we live nowhere in an apartment and hopefully no one is doing anything in your garage. <laughs> exactly. All right. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Uh, once again, Space Vacast <laughs> Epic is available. Uh, Spacevacast.com slash epic. You're going to get access to exclusive content, including what's coming up next, which is Space Vacast after dark because it's, it's always, always dark, dark somewhere, somewhere. Uh, that's available only to space vacast epic subscribers you have gigs and gigs and gigs of content just for you uh, the epic subscription uh, ten dollars a month or a hundred dollars a year and it helps pay for space vacast so we can bring, keep bringing epic awesomeness to you hopefully live shows like this space pods uh, la space salons aiaa meetings so forth and so, uh, so space on space up space up i I'd like to thank everyone for watching this week, and um, we'll see you soon. Maximum dynamic pressure. Two, contact police golf time. Target five hours, 22 minutes, 59 decimal, 111 one seconds UTC. So I uh, hope you were not playing the uh, nominal shot game with that. Right, <laughs> right. I, I don't know. I don't know why. You rocket know, companies... space is going well when everyone says things are nominal. Nominal. Rapid disassembly. Nominal. In the most yeah, <laughs> thank you. In the most boring way. It oh terrible. man. Uh, so yeah. So that's not. Uh, they're asking if that was the first launch for Sea Launch. Uh, no, it is not. Sea Launch has been around for a while. They actually went into Chapter Eleven protection a while ago, right. uh, and um, they had their kind of restructure. There is a, th this is a fun one, search YouTube, I think it's Sea Launch Rocket Explosion, something like that. Um, it's, it is an epic rocket launch. It basically goes up and starts to spin on the pad, uh, and you kind of see it go, boom, and then they just dissolve to a Sea Launch graphic. <laughs> it's like everything you don't want to do <laughs> when you have a problem with your rocket. You it was turtle. hilarious. Uh, so yeah, but uh, that was successful. Well, it was mostly successful. The launch itself was successful, right. but unfortunately, uh, I'm hearing as of today, uh, the solar array failed to deploy on right. the satellite itself. Now that's not a sea launch thing, right? That's the uh, that's an Intel sat thing. The guys who make the satellite. Uh, They're not too happy. Yeah. So uh, my understanding is the solar panels have failed to deploy. Right. On top of, of course. Not that solids are bad per se. It was really no. the side mounted design that was bad. Uh, it also doesn't carry cargo with it. So it's right. it's designed to bring just humans. And after both the Challenger and 
uh, Columbia disaster, mm -hmm. the um, in the boards that did the inspections for that both said trying to do all of this in one vehicle is a terrible idea. So to keep humans and cargo separate. Separate, right? They shouldn't go up together. They're two different things with two different needs. They need two different vehicles. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to design two different rockets. Right. It just means that humans go up on one payload, cargo goes up on another payload. Okay. And so that's kind of the idea behind this. This sends up humans. So Right. So this is humans only. It, it, it would never do cargo, right? Is that I what you're saying? I believe so. Right now, this okay. is humans only. It's not designed for cargo. Okay. I, although I, I don't know why you wouldn't, assuming there's... You might be able to just not put humans on it, and stick cargo in there. Well, I but guess that that was my differentiation. Like uh, the the dragon module, right? Uh, is is both in right. theory, but right now it's cargo only. Right, right, no, right, but it's designed as opposed to this. I guess that's my question. This is designed for humans. Okay, that's right. my question. So that's that's kind of the point. So hey. that happened this last week. That happened on, oh, I want to say, the 31st. I uh, believe it was, yeah. Right, and that's kind of a huge milestone for being able to bring humans up. Yeah. Obviously, it was a captive carry, so it was tethered to that uh, helicopter you saw in the beginning the entire time. But still, uh, you, you know, baby steps, you got got to test out your vehicle and make it go. Mm -hmm. um, also, for those of you who remember this company, see, and because of that, it, all of the We're other... We're not going to talk about it at all. Um, all of the other, uh, <laughs> kind of, we're actually not going to talk about it in the beginning part of the show really at all. Uh, it, it shadowed over all of this other really great space news. And I did want to kind of talk about some of these things. Mm -hmm. For example, a lot of people look at the dragon. They're like, oh, I can't believe we're taking huge steps backwards. What happened to the space shuttle? Well, right, right. as it happens, there actually was a captive carry t test. Well, you may have missed this. There was a captive carry test with Dream Chaser. Yes. Dream Chaser is... I'm going to call it a next generation space shuttle, right? It's Sure, it's, it's space shuttle-ish. Well, it is a shuttle, right? There's the Dream Chaser right there. Pity. It's much smaller than the traditional space shuttle you would think of, and it's not a side-mounted design like the space shuttle you uh, uh, are familiar yesteryear. with. Exactly. Uh, this sits on top of a rocket. It would fly up to the space station carrying humans on board, and from there, uh, you, you'd be able to do what, you know, disembark, do your thing on the space station, and right. then it would fly back to space just like the Earth. Fly back to space. Fly <laughs> back to Earth um, like a plane. Like a plane. Like a, like a brick, really, with with wings. But <laughs> you get right, you get the idea. The, the beautiful thing about this is it kind of gets rid of all the bad things that the shuttle had. For example, side-mounted side design. Okay. Where you have the shuttle on the side of the... Um, uh, external tank and you've got all that stuff that can fall down onto it right, and all right. that bad stuff. Uh, it also gets rid of the solids potentially, depends right. on what rocket you launch it on. Good evening. On behalf of Benjamin and Carrie Ann Higginbotham, making space commonplace, we welcome all of you to Space Vidcast and their living room. We've gathered here tonight around the monitors as people of all lands have gathered for thousands and thousands of hours before us to share the light and to share a story. An amazing story as old as exploration itself but still being written. And though each of us has our own individual stories to tell, a true adventure emerges when we bring them all together as one. We hope you enjoy our story tonight. Reflections of Space. Welcome to Space Vidcast, episode 508 for, oh, what is today? June second. June second. Wow, the time it's already June. Does, time sure does fly by. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me, as always, is beautiful, lovely, wonderful, and talented Carrie Ann Higginbotham. We'll be your hosts for this show. Uh, there was a little thing that happened in space, which was SpaceX, and that kind of dominated the news. It did. Uh, sea launch launched. Uh, the thing with Sea Launch is uh, here's the thing with uh, launching rockets. You want to get it kind of 
as close to the equator as you can. Right. You, you get the best benefit from that. And most of the equator is covered in water. Mm -hmm. So Sea Launch has this giant launch barge. It's basically, an, uh, I think it's, it's a, a decommissioned oil rig. Brilliant idea. They roll it out to the equator, as close to the equator as they can get, and they launch a rock. So here you go. This happened, uh, this happened again, this actually, on the 31st. Yeah. 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 Light is nominal at 